Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to Health and Fasting. In this episode, we're going to be discussing chronic health conditions and fasting. So there are a number of health conditions that I would like to focus on. Obviously, there are many other health conditions that people may suffer with, but the few that I'd like to focus on in this episode are heart disease, respiratory problems, and kidney problems. So let's start with heart disease. Many people in the UK suffer with some form of heart disease or another. This is a very common problem and lots of the population are affected by this. So by heart disease, we mean diseases that affect the heart and the circulatory system. So the heart is the organ that is responsible for pumping blood around the body and making sure that oxygen reaches all parts and all organs of the body. There are many conditions and diseases that affect the heart and I'd like to discuss a few of these and how these may be important in terms of fasting. So one simple condition that affects the heart is called blood pressure. So lots of people suffer with high blood pressure. This is where the, when the, your GP measures your blood pressure, puts a cuff around your arm and then the reading that he receives is high and then this may cause problems. So how does high blood pressure exist and why is it a problem? So blood pressure is the pressure that is maintained in the body when it is pumping blood around the system. If we think of pipes and we think of resistance, this will hopefully help us to understand what blood pressure is. So if you have a pipe and the pipe is narrow, then the pressure that the pump has to exert will be higher. So it's again a similar, similar phenomenon. If we think of that in terms of the body, for some reason, the blood vessels have become either stiff or there's some blockage or there's some resistance to the flow of blood. Now this can often be connected to things like high cholesterol or sometimes age, sometimes being overweight. All of these things may affect your blood pressure and may cause your blood pressure to be high. So that's a common condition that people may suffer from. Other conditions are things like what we call angina uh, where this is a result of blood flow to the heart being less than it should be. Again, the same risk factors may be involved that are connected with blood pressure. So being overweight, having high cholesterol, having a poor diet, all of these factors may be related to why the patient develops angina. So when, when someone has angina, they may often get chest pain. So the pain that they get is a tightness. It's described as a tightness across the center of the chest. Sometimes people describe a feeling of squeezing, of pressure, sometimes a feeling of a belt being put across the chest. These are common symptoms that patients with angina experience. And they may experience these initially when they are exercising or when they're walking or when they're exerting themselves. So they find that they're walking uh, somewhere and they start to get discomfort in the chest. And then this uh, is a sign that they may have angina. Some of the other symptoms that they may get, they may get pain radiating to the neck and the jaw and sometimes down the left arm because this is uh, connected with the nerve supply in that region. The nerves of this area are affected when patients get angina and this is why they get pain referred to the left side, the left arm, up to the neck and to the jaw. So these are common symptoms that occur when patients have angina. And again, this is because of poor circulation and poor blood supply to the heart. Now, when angina becomes worse, it may result in what's called unstable angina. So unstable angina is where the patient may experience pain at rest. So they're not actually exerting themselves, they're not doing any exercise, they're actually just at rest. And they get this pain in the chest and the pain in the neck and the arm and the jaw. And this is something that suggests that the circulation is actually even worse than just when it's bad in angina. And then, God forbid, in the worst case scenario, this may result in what's called a myocardial infarction or heart attack, where the blood supply to the heart is extremely compromised and part of the heart muscle receives no blood and then that muscle is then damaged and sometimes there is no more blood supply and that muscle is totally useless as a result of that. So during a heart attack, 
patients may experience severe what we call crushing chest pain across the center of their chest. They may feel hot and sweaty, they may feel sick, they may actually be sick. They sometimes describe what is known as an impending sense of doom. They feel as if they're about to die. So this is a very serious condition and does need medical emergency treatment, which would be by calling 999 and you'd be admitted to the hospital and further treatment undertaken from there. So we talked about blood pressure, angina and heart attack. So these are some common symptoms that affect the cardiovascular system or the heart. Other conditions that can affect the heart include things like heart failure, where again, due to the heart not working as well as it should, there is pooling of fluid and people become short of breath. They become very tired. They may develop swelling of their legs. They may develop swelling around the lower back. And this is again a problem due to the circulation and poor functioning of the heart. So what we call congestive heart failure or congestive cardiac failure. This is another problem that people with heart disease may suffer with. So why is this important for us to think about in terms of fasting? So people with these conditions may have chronic problems with mobility, chronic problems with breathing, chronic problems with pain, and they may be on a number of medications as a result of that. So these are things that may be affected by fasting and by particularly long fasts, where they may be less able to manage and cope with the duration of the fast. So as with diabetes, if there is a long-term health problem and it affects you adversely, again, you, the medical advice would be that you do not fast and you are excused from that from a medical point of view. So if you are someone who has heart problems, this is worth talking to your GP or your specialist to discuss what the effects of fasting may be on your heart and cardiovascular system and how you can try and manage that. So they may look at your blood pressure and see if your blood medication needs to be changed. They may try and improve or increase some medication or they may discuss with you lifestyle issues that might help you to help uh, improve your heart health and hopefully allow you to fast. Now obviously it's good to do these things even when you're not fasting and ideally to prepare and do these before you start fasting. So thinking about increasing your exercise tolerance, how can you do that? By doing slow exercise over a long sustained period of time. So if you find you're short of breath, then just walk a short period and then, then rest. But hopefully over a period of time, you'll be able to increase that and your exercise tolerance will, in, will increase and improve. Also thinking about your diet and lifestyle. So thinking about what type of things are healthy to eat and trying to eat more of those and cut out what is less healthy. So those are some, some common heart problems that people may suffer with. Turning to the respiratory or lung conditions, there are again a number of conditions that people may suffer with. So let's just think of some of the common ones. For example, lots of people suffer with asthma. So asthma is a what we call a reversible airways disease, where the airways become tight and reactive, and then you have problems with breathing, which include things like wheezing and feeling short of breath. So this may occur in a number of situations. Sometimes environmental situations can affect this, where you are in a dusty environment, a polluted environment, and you find your airways become tight and you start to wheeze, or for example, change in weather. So some people find in the summer, as they develop things like hay fever or the weather becomes hotter, they may have problems with their airways. Whereas some people find in the cold weather that the airways become tight and reactive due to the damp, due to the environment, due to the changes in the weather becoming colder. They find their airways become tight and they start to have more problems with wheezing and shortness of breath. Normally in the majority of, normally in the majority of asthma patients or patients who have wheezing, there is not an issue with fasting. It just means that you need to think about how you can improve your lung health and think about making that possible so you will then be able to fast. So things that you could do are looking at how you use your inhalers. So a very big problem we find with patients is they're actually okay, they're just not very good at using the inhalers. So it's worth talking to your GP or the asthma nurse at your surgery and thinking about, am I using my inhalers correctly? 
Am I using the right technique when I administer them? And am I using them at the right times? So asthmatics may be put on a number of inhalers. One will normally be what's called salbutamol, which is, people may know is a blue inhaler. This is what's called the preventer inhaler. And this is used only when you feel tight and wheezy and hopefully should not be used that often. And then they'll be put on some form of uh, preventer inhaler, which may be brown or purple or, or another color. And this will be something to be used regularly to keep your airways open and prevent them from becoming reactive. So it's worth thinking about, am I on the right inhaler? Am I using the right dose? Am I using the right technique? And this will hopefully help you maintain your airways health and be able to carry out your fasting. Another problem that people may suffer with is what's called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This tends to be in older patients and is normally in 80 to 90% of the times related to smoking. So people who have COPD have generally been smokers at some point in their lives. Now hopefully with the decrease in smoking in the UK, we may find future episodes of COPD, future instances become less. But there are lots and lots of patients who suffer with COPD and these problems associated with this. So like asthma, this is an airways disease but it doesn't really have what we call the reversible element. So it's more of a chronic problem. And again, people may suffer with difficulty with breathing and problems with shortness of breath and these sorts of issues. But they may also suffer with recurrent chest infections. So the presenting symptom often is recurrent cough, bringing up what we call thick sputum or phlegm, uh, which may be dark brown or green in color. And then this is what is often what is used to diagnose patients who have COPD. And they'll have a blowing test where their lung function will be measured and then that will be confirmed to be COPD. So these patients, again, hopefully with adequate management and adequate use of inhalers will be able to fast and carry out their religious duties in respect to that. So now I'd also like to talk very briefly about kidney disease. Kidney disease is not that common, not as common as cardiovascular and respiratory disease, but it is something that is important to, to consider and for us to be aware of with respect to fasting. So as we mentioned before, during fasting, we'll be consuming less fluids and we're at risk of becoming dehydrated. So kidney function is something that is very important for us to consider during the month of fasting. So for example, kidney Kidneys are affected by many things, so people with other chronic conditions may have impairment and poor function of their kidneys, and this is what we call as chronic kidney disease. So this is a problem that is something that we need to be aware of and how we can try and manage that. So also other medications may be a factor in terms of affecting the kidney function. So your doctor will be aware of these and they will be able to discuss with you if there are any medications that may have an impact on your kidney and whether this may be something that you need to think about in terms of trying to manage that and if there will be any effect in terms of fasting. So thinking about that and how we can maintain our levels of hydration are two very important factors in terms of managing kidney disease. In terms of some of the symptoms of kidney disease, this can affect your uh, level of fluid in the body. So sometimes people with chronic kidney disease get swelling, they get swollen legs, and they may feel uh, pain and discomfort as a result of this. So again, if you are someone who suffers with kidney disease, it's worth talking to your doctor about, is there any way you can maintain your kidney function whilst also fasting, thinking about in particular the fluid intake and how you would manage that during a long period of fasting. So I hope that this has been useful in terms of thinking about some important health topics and their effects and how we might need to be aware of these during the period of fasting. I look forward to seeing you again in another episode of Health and Fasting when we again will be discussing more issues that will be of importance to us during this holy month. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.